Hi everyone, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the bisection method to find the zero point of this function. Uh, as we can see I've graphed the thing here just across outside the view. I've calculated the x and y values which I plotted here. Uh, I've shown how to do that in a previous video. So the bisection method relies on an iterative process. So we can iterate this process as many times as we like. Uh, I'm just going to these really aren't going to be used for anything but just sort of checking how many times we've repeated this. Iteration requires us to put a an lower and an upper boundary which are on either side of the zero point. So I'll start here. Clearly this zero point is somewhere close to 0.5. I'll guess my first value for x at zero and the upper value at one. And I need to calculate the value of the function at each of these lower and upper. So I'll type here cosine of b5 minus b5. Remember asterisk for multiply by. And the exponential function in Excel is typed as exp. And the parameter there, b5, is the power on the natural log, uh, on the number e. And that's going to be right. So that's it. I'll copy that across. At the moment, it's assuming a value zero. We'll fix that in a moment. The midpoint, uh, the most important bit that I want to demonstrate is that our lower value, when x at zero, the function is positive, and the upper value, where we chose x equals one, the function is negative. I don't really mind what these values are for the function, just that they are opposite. It's crucial that these first two are one positive, one negative, on opposite sides of this point of interest. Now in order to make that stand out a bit more clearly, I'll add conditional formatting to these cells. Uh, a new rule. Now I'm just going to find the one. Format only cells that contain a cell value which is less than zero. Uh, in other words a negative. And the format I'm going to choose to fill those cells with a lovely orange color. So you can see there that it's picked out this one. Now what do we do? When we've found two x values which are all causing the function to be on an of opposite sign, we take a best guess that the zero somewhere between them, let's just estimate the midpoint. So to find the midpoint of two values, we add the two values together and we divide by two. This is giving me 0.5. Now the value of the midpoint here has updated. That's good. Uh, the decision becomes... I'll copy these down one more line. Now, don't worry about them too much at the moment. The decision becomes what do I use for my new values? So I've got that when x is 0.5, the function is positive. We can see that because it's um, white background. And when x was 1, the function was negative. So I really want to use these two points as my new lower and upper boundary. Now I could just type 0.5 here, and I could go and type 1 here. And that's good. Uh, it's calculated out the values of the function, and it's given me the midpoint between these two. And now I can look across here and see that these two are the ones which are opposite. These two are both the same sign. If these two are opposite, I really want 0 uh, 0.5 and 0 0.75 as my new upper and lower boundary on the next iteration. And I can go and type those. Now I need to copy the formula, wouldn't I? Give me a new midpoint. Copy these, give me some new calculations, and I could keep going. It's going to be pretty tedious to keep choosing the new upper and lower boundary for myself each time. There should be a better way to choose these upper and lower boundaries. Now, I'll leave all these calculations alone. That's good, because that's calculating each. I'll leave the midpoint calculation alone, because that's going to be the same each time. The bit that I really want to do here is decide, do I choose for my new lower boundary, and it'll either be the lower value 0 or the mid value 0 
do I choose in here the new upper boundary and it'll either be the existing one of one or the 0.5 from previously. Now, how do I choose? I look at the signs over here. And I notice that if the two numbers are the same sign, positives, their product is positive. If the two are opposite signs, their product is negative. And it would work if they were both negative as well, because they were same sign, product positive. So that's what I'm going to use. If the product of those two is less than zero. That means they're opposite signs. I would want the new lower boundary to be that one. If they weren't opposite signs, I'd want the midpoint to be the new lower boundary. I'll need to make a similar choice over here. If I'll be looking at the previous calculation. If the product of those two numbers is less than zero. In other words, if the product is negative, they have opposite signs. And if they do have opposite signs, they're the, they're the x values that I want. That means that I would want to copy the existing upper value. Otherwise, I'd have to swap it to be the mid value. And there it is. Let's check to see if that worked. Did it correctly identify that these two were the ones that I wanted to work with? Did it make 0.5 the new lower boundary? And did it keep one as the upper? It did. It's then calculated the new midpoint of 0.75. We've gone ahead over here. This time we can see that the opposite ones here are between the lower and the mid. So we would want to keep the lower this time and move the 0.75. Let's just see if it chose, it kept that one. And it kept the 0.75. Seems to be working. If I copy that formula all the way down the page, and that one all the way down the page, then it makes the appropriate choices each time. And these numbers in the middle, these midpoints, these are going to get progressively closer and closer to the, the root of the equation, to the solution here, where y equals zero. Notice that here after 14 iterations, then to the first three decimal places, even to the first four decimal places, these values are not changing. Any discrepancy that we have between this and the real answer would be about one part in 10,000 after just 14 iterations. Of course, we could do more iterations if we wanted to, but that's probably accurate enough for most purposes. That's it for now. Uh, the bisection method of solving an equation using some simple formulas in Excel.